Uh, since you'll be discussing uh, bone breaks, I wanted to talk a little bit about different types of bone, bone breaks. Um, we've talked about fracture. Fracture just means the bone breaks, but it can break in a number of different ways. Okay, so um, a stable fracture means that the bone breaks, but it doesn't, the bone's not out of place in any way. Okay, so. So in this transverse humeral fracture here, you can see the bone is still in the right area. It just cracked. Okay, so it's a stable fracture. Um, an open or compound fracture, these are very gruesome because this is where the bone punctures the skin. Okay, and so this will often happen in a very intense break where the bone has broken and now there's a jagged edge and that jagged edge pokes through the skin and then you can see the broken bone through the skin. All right, um, and these are very serious because obviously you can also have a lot of bleeding um, if it punctures blood vessels around it and it's exiting outside of the body. Um, so um, infection is a, can be a big problem with open compound fractures as well. All right, a transverse fracture um, is like this one here, where you have um, the fracture goes in the transverse plane. All right, and is essentially horizontal in the bone. In an oblique fracture, you have some sort of cross-plane diagonal crack. So in an oblique fracture, you might have something like this, okay, where it's it's not horizontal or vertical. but now going in, a, in multiple planes. All right, in a communid, a communid, I don't know how to say that, communuted, in the C one, um, it breaks into a bunch of small pieces. Three or more, okay, so let's say you had a break here, a break there, and another little break there. So basically the bone shattered into multiple pieces. All right, there's another one I want to put on here. Green stick, okay. Um, and this is where, I'm going to draw a horrible bone here. Here's the other end. But this is where the bone splinters. Okay, much like if you cracked a green stick, so a stick that's alive, you know, and you're trying to break them in half and they don't split evenly and they splinter. All right, and this often have, happens in younger bones which are still forming and growing and not as solid as adult bones. So ch children will often get these green stick breaks, fractures, yeah. So can a Stable fracture be transverse. Mm -hmm. So they can be multiple. Um, a break can have multiple of these descriptors. Okay, so this should help you in understanding then types of breaks, especially when you're looking at your discussion assi assignment. 
associated with your action. Okay, um, next thing we're going to talk about is the development of bone fusion and really bone appearance. So when you are bone, born, um, not all of your bones have even appeared in your skeleton. So for example, um, a baby's wrist is still purely cartilage. It doesn't have any of the carpal bones in there yet. Um, those develop as, you know, at different stages, uh, different times in development. Um, and you also have more bones when you are older, right? So you have epiphyses where bones form, which haven't fully united with diaphyses where bones have also formed. So you start with over 300 bones, you end with just roughly over 200 bones when you're fully mature. Okay, and this can help with forensics. So we're gonna watch this video, I showed this to a couple, uh, one section in lab, um, where they used then the ossification of bones at different time periods, different developmental periods, to identify remains of people that had been murdered. Okay. Um, and I'm not really, I, just, I don't know why all of my examples are like, <laughs> like really, I'm not really into this stuff. I do think it's interesting within anatomy, but I don't go home and like study dead, dead murders all the time. Okay, here we go. I'm not a closet One of the legends serial killer. Bone field is forensic anthropologist Dr. Clyde Snow. He helped identify the remains of Kate Tut. Now he'll face his biggest challenge: putting names and faces to the bones found under John Wayne Gacy's house. Police now have more than enough evidence to put Gacy away forever, but they're still trying to assemble the puzzle of Gacy's killing spree. This was the first time that. Forensic anthropologist had been asked to examine this number of bodies of victims in the case. First, police want to get an overview of Gacy's crimes and see if there's a common thread. Dr. Snow turns to the bones for help and starts with the most basic question of identity. How old were these victims when they died? To assess Age and depth of juveniles. Forensic anthropologists frequently look at the size of the bones, the points of clues as to age. In addition, and you can see how these bony caps on the ends of the bones of the growing child are separate. And as the bone continues to grow, these caps will go right on out with that bone until they fuse, and then they look like that. When the bones fuse, that means they've stopped growing. And different bones stop at different ages. The hands and feet at about 15, the thigh bone at roughly 17, and the collarbone, the last bone to stop growing, at approximately age 28. When Snow checks the collarbones of the skeletons found under Gacy's house, none of them are fully fused. These victims were all less than 30 years old. The next question, what were the genders of Gacy's targets? First, Dr. Snow will focus on the size and shape of the femur, or thigh bone. The head of the femur, the part that fits into the pelvis, tends to be much larger in males than it does in females. Forensic anthropologists can also look to other bones for clues, like the pelvis. Females usually have a wider, rounder pelvis to accommodate childbirth. And not only the pelvis, but also their differences particularly in the adults in the skull. Males, for example, have the very heavy brow ridges above the, above the eyes here. They have big mastoid processes, this lump of bone right behind your ear, a number of, of differences. Police have recovered very complete skeletons, so Dr. Snow has enough markers to confirm each victim's gender. Based on these bones, the overall snapshot of Gacy's victims comes more clearly into focus. They're not only young, they're all male. Okay. 
So there's a number of TV shows, right, that also emphasize uh, bone forensics, right, bones, right? Or there's NCIS, you know, all these shows, when they talk about murders, often they'll, if there's a skeleton found with nothing else, they're going to rely on these indicators to, for age and sex of the victim. Um, so what I've done here, well, let's see. Let's do this first, and then we'll go back. So some of the differences between males and females, a lot of them are concentrated on the hip bones, okay? And we went over these in lecture as well. So um, let's see what you guys remember. Why don't you get you and your buddy come up with your list of differences between the hip bones between males and females. Okay. In females, it is wider, and in males, it is taller. All right, the pubic angle is greater than 90 degrees in females, and then is around 90 degrees in, in males. All right, now the acetabulum, this is one of the questions on the quiz that I had you think about a little bit. All right, I didn't say it explicitly in the lecture, but if the acetabulum is angled laterally, meaning out, that means their legs are further apart. Okay, so in females, the acetabulum is angled laterally, and in males it's angled medially. So males' legs are positioned under their body a little bit more than in females. No, more towards the middle. So if it's right here, you're talking about laterally or medially. Yeah. In the uh, x-ray on the video, it shows that the, the female's femurs are angled in, not straight down. Right. So not the, I, I guess I should say, not the, the angle, but the, I guess, width at which it flares out. So the females are more, where it starts is further out in uh, females, okay. whereas men's are more underneath. So maybe I need to rephrase that a little bit. <laughs> you yes. guys want the point back? <laughs> we'll see. It, it, I'm sure it'll make a big difference in your grades. But. Okay. So other things which are not associated with the hip, as mentioned in the, the video, males have large mastoid processes. Which is right under your ear, or right beside the bottom of your ear. Um, and that story I told you where the guy broke his nose on my head, that's what he hit. He hit my mastoid process. Um, and they also have a larger brow ridge. Okay, I have a joke with me and my brothers, we have prominent brow ridges. And we call each other Neander Bros. <laughs> so Neander Brows. Are they also doctors? Uh, one of them is, yes. Um, all right, and then there are a lot of smaller differences um, in development, which we're not going to go over. There are actually quite a few differences between males and females in their bone development. Um, a lot of them have to do with when bones appear and when they um, fully ossify. But I've made a big list here. Okay, I know this is a big mess. Of when different bones appear and when they ossify. So most of this is ossification. But some of these I put two numbers here. Okay. So the clavicle epiphysis forms at age 19. 
and then fully ossifies at age eight, uh, 28. Okay, so there's two indicators of age in just the one uh, bone. Same with the ribs. Um, uh, it's not the ribs altogether. There's a piece of the ribs. I'll have to look that up. Sorry. Doctor, yeah. What is like the evolutional significance of growing our clavicle once we're like the rest of our bodies fully formed? I don't know if there is evolutionary significance of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, but that's not something I've thought about. Um, let's see. So there are some differences in structures here. So the ischiopubic ramus ossifies at six years old. Um, what are some other things to explain here? The carpal bones start to appear at two to three months. So this is appearance. The patella does not appear for, till you're about three. Okay, so kids have just the cartilaginous knee, kneecap, until they're about three when the bone center starts to show. Okay, we do know a couple of these. What was the uh, ossification of the frontal suture? We talked about that one last time. Three, two, nine months. And then what about the on anterior fontanelle? When did that one ossify? Two years. Two years. Okay, and then I put a little link up here to where I got all this information, which is this, like, medical doctor presentation. So you can go through that if you want to. You probably can't do it on the PDF. Um, I can post it to Canvas as well. Um, but when you go through that, it's like 200 slides long or something and goes through all the different appearance and ossification centers. All right, so now what I want you guys to do is take the worksheet. So these are all kind of randomly put in here. If you open up the worksheet, I've got just a chart, a blank chart, and I want you to go through chronologically and find ages, make an age profile from youngest to oldest of when these different bone um, ossification things appear. And then once you do that, so some of them are a little bit redundant, so you can just pick one or the other if, the, if they have the same thing. For example, the metacarpals are from 16 to 17 years, and the elbow is at 17 years too. So you could combine those on your list or um, just pick one or the other. Okay, and then under, after you do that, there's the male and female one, which is a list we just made. After you do that, Make a profile for the different, there's eight different, or I think there's nine different um, age and sex profiles that I've given, and I want you to identify then around that age, what are the bones that are ossifying, which would be diagnostic in characterizing them at that age, and their sex. And the sex is going to be pretty similar for all of them, the things we just listed. And also, there's space for you to do yourself, okay? So what, how old are you? What bones have yet to ossify in your skeleton if you were to get, you know, killed by a serial killer? How would, how would they identify your bone? Watch out. <laughs> 